In wildlife photography, you're probably gonna fall into one of three shooting methods, which are manual, aperture priority, or use a combination of both depending on your experience and the subjects you're shooting. Today, we're focusing on aperture priority. Make sure that at some point after you watch this video, you go outside and test this for yourself. What is aperture priority? Aperture priority is a shooting mode where the user has full control over the aperture, also known as the f-stop, and the shutter speed is controlled by the camera automatically. Essentially, as you adjust your f-stop to either a wider depth of field or a more narrow depth of field, your camera is gonna automatically adjust your shutter speed to compensate for the amount of light that is coming into the camera. This is gonna help get you a more even exposure. Now you also do have full control over your ISO, but we're gonna get into ISO tips more towards the end of this video. So let's start with showing you how this works. Here you can see as I drop and increase my aperture, the shutter speed is automatically changing. I've set on my camera a max shutter speed and a minimum shutter speed. No matter what camera body you shoot on, they're all gonna look essentially similar to this. I shoot on Canon, so if you have a Canon, it's gonna be really easy to follow along. Now to set your shutter speed limits, you wanna go into the settings, go to custom camera settings menu, find set shutter speed range. Here you can adjust your highest range and your lowest range. After adjusting them, scroll down and hit okay. Now you may notice that I set my maximum and my minimum to some pretty specific numbers, and that's for a reason. You may be asking yourself, why did I choose 2000 as my max, and 250 as my minimum? And I'll tell you why, it's because the lens that I'm shooting with is a Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter sport lens. As wildlife photographers, we're usually shooting with three, four, five, 600 millimeter lenses, or sometimes 800 millimeters. And then there's teleconverters you can add also to those lenses. On my specific lens, its widest aperture is five, and at 600 millimeters is 6.3. Because I'm generally shooting between 400 and 600 millimeters, I want the most minimum shutter speed that I'm using to either be equal to or double my focal length. And the reason for this is the rule of doubles. I know I can already hear you saying, but a 250 shutter speed is less than equal. Well, that's because I'm often shooting on a tripod, which helps with handshake or shutter shake. Camera shake or handshake is simply from holding the weight of your camera. Shutter shake is the pressing of the shutter. A good technique you may not know about is instead of pressing straight down on the shutter button, which often pushes the camera down, try rolling your fingertip from front to back to reduce shutter shake even more. The high shutter of 2000 is also fast enough to combat most camera, hand, and shutter shake, and even motion blur that is coming from your subject moving. And just like rolling your finger back on that shutter button, if you like content like this, roll your finger over that mouse pad or that mouse and click the like button for me. This tells me to make more videos like this and helps this video be seen by more people like you and I. Now that you have a good understanding of how aperture priority works, I wanna give you some tips on adjusting your ISO. Of course, there's the obvious option of manually adjusting your ISO. The benefit there is you have full control over the amount of noise that you're allowing to be exposed in your image. The negative aspect is that this takes a considerable amount of more time and you actually risk missing the shot that you went out there to take in the first place. The solution I recommend is setting your camera to auto ISO and pairing it with an ISO cap as well. Having your camera set to auto ISO still gives you pretty much full control over the amount of noise that is gonna be in your exposure and saves you the amount of time. That way you can keep vigilant and have your eye on the wildlife or whatever your subject is, either through your viewfinder or on your LCD screen. Before I show you how to set this, I want to inform you that every camera has a native ISO. Most entry DSLRs are between 4 and 800 ISO. Professional DSLRs can be 32 to 5,000 or even 6,400 ISO. And if you're shooting on a professional mirrorless camera, you can reach ISO levels of 5,000 to 25,600 or something ridiculous like that. I shoot on a Canon 1DX Mark II and the very most I will go is 6,400 ISO. But rarely I shoot at 6,400 and I try not to go above 3,200, even though I use Topaz Denoise to help out with the noise levels in my photos. And if you wanna check that out, I'll put a link to Topaz Denoise in the description below so you can watch a video on it and see how it can actually help noise in your photos. You can easily Google your native ISO, but I also recommend taking your camera outside and testing your ISO levels in the conditions of light in which you normally would shoot it. So if you're shooting in golden hour, uh, whether it be in the morning, evening, or you're shooting in usually in cloudy conditions during the day or astrophotography, take your camera out, test the ISO levels and see which one has the most grain to the least grain that still allows you to get a sharp image with enough light in it. 
that is going to be the best way for you to test your camera's native ISO level capabilities. Like with shutter speed, this may look different on your specific camera model, but again, they're all gonna be somewhat similar. So just try and follow along. If not, you can always Google how to do this on your camera model. So go into your menu settings. If you shoot on Canon, it'll be your shoot settings. Look for ISO speed settings auto range, and then set your minimum and maximum, and then press OK. With these now say, so you don't have to worry about the uncontrolled nature of wildlife you're shooting. When shooting wildlife, we're shooting unpredictable subjects. We don't know if our subject is going to fly or walk into a shaded area or an area with extreme highlights. Shooting an aperture priority, having your shutter speed maximum and your minimum set with your auto ISO, set with a cap set to your auto ISO is gonna allow you to track the animal or whoever, whatever your subject is while it's moving into these different lighting conditions and you don't have to take your eye off the viewfinder and the only thing that you should have to change is your aperture. Now, it, it might take some practice to realize the conditions that you're shooting in and what your caps should be, but again, this is gonna save you time in the long run. If you currently shoot a manual or you choose to shoot a manual, just remember you have to adjust three different settings to take the picture and that's gonna slow you down and you're going to risk possibly missing the shot that again you went out there to take in the first place. Can it be done though? Absolutely. I just want to inform you that it takes a lot of practice and time in the field to be able to understand exposure theory and the exposure triangle in order to process the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO in order to get the right shot that you want in seconds or milliseconds. It takes a lot of time to see your subject and say, okay, this is how I see it in my head. These are the settings I need to adjust. And boom, there you are. Shooting an aperture priority is really good for beginners. And it also is just good for those who are shooting fast moving objects. The sole purpose of shooting an aperture priority is to maximize your reaction time and your vigilance with your subject ultimately increasing your odds of nailing the photo that you wanted. I will add, there are times where I will not shoot an aperture priority and I switch back to manual. When shooting still wildlife like owls, my camera's on a tripod. So I'll often switch back to manual mode because you can get away with a slower shutter and still get sharp images. Comment below if you think aperture priority is something that you would actually try or tell me what type of mode you shoot in on a regular basis. Which one do you feel most comfortable using? Now I want you guys to learn from my mistakes and grow in your abilities. So go watch my 12 mistakes to avoid as a wildlife photographer next.